Hey guys, welcome back to Nifty Invest. In the ever-evolving landscape of global finance, uncertainties and potential crises loom, and it's crucial to understand the nuances that could shape the future of our monetary systems. Renowned silver guru David Morgan recently shared his insights in a thought-provoking video addressing the specter of hyperinflation, system freezes, and the critical role of tangible assets in safeguarding wealth. In this video, we delve into Morgan's analysis, exploring the historical context, potential triggers, and the looming questions surrounding the reset of currencies. Morgan initiates the discussion by challenging conventional perceptions of hyperinflation, emphasizing that it might already be underway but over an extended period. Reflecting on the drastic inflation over the past 120 years, he highlights the gradual erosion of purchasing power, making it imperceptible to the masses. This sets the stage for a nuanced exploration of the dual challenges faced by the financial system, hyperinflationary crashes and deep devaluations of assets. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content we do here on this channel. Let's get right into the video. And I know everyone thinks hyperinflation. I mean, we've had a hyperinflation. It's just been over such a long period of time, no one sees it for that. Right. If you took my grandfather and woke him up, you know, I mean, he's been <laughs> deceased a long time, but if you woke him up and you said, hey, you know, a, a car costs what an apartment building used to cost in downtown San Francisco, uh, he wouldn't believe you. I mean, that would be a hyperinflation to him. Right. It's just it's taken 120 something years. It, it's been, uh, let's say, adjusted to. Right. But now that it's accelerating, so you could have a hyperinflationary crash of the currency and at the same time a de devaluation in the amount of assets that are backed by currency. In other words, the money supply could contract because the bonds to become cash have to be discounted at such a huge rate. So if everybody had to go to cash, for example, let's say a hypothetical, everything's sold, just like in a movie rollover. Mm -hmm. So all bonds, all stocks, everything sold. Everything has to go to cash. So the value of a stock certificate drops immensely because no one wants to buy it. They have to scramble for cash as well. So the system has leverage both directions. Right. So when you see the money supply contracting in M2, which it has, and the velocity being so low, it's the old expression deer in the headlights. People with money don't know what Right. People that want to borrow can't because they're not credit worthy. And so the whole system starts to freeze up. And this is what Jim Rickards has talked to about some time ago about this ICE-9, this Kurt Vonnegut, Cat's Cradle hypothetical idea where this water, this H2O um, ICE-9 variety, which is all, you know, it's just fiction. But once a couple of drops of this hits, all the water freezes. So that's what happened in 2008, very momentarily. Mm -hmm. The banks did not trust each other for their sub prime mortgages, and that stopped the liquidity again. And instead of being because of interest rates being higher, it was because that these junk bonds were worthless, and most of the banks knew it, and they didn't want to do any loaning against each other because they knew these things were dog duty. Mm -hmm. So the Fed came in and said, well, here, we need to take care of this. Give me your dog doo-doo. I'll pay you full face value for it. And they flooded the market with treasuries. But now we've got a problem with treasuries because the treasuries are not worth, they're not dog doo-doo, although the 30-year might be considered that. I would argue, yes. <laughs> no one's going to get back anything close to the purchasing power 30 years from now mm -hmm. from what you would get today, which is about two cents of what it was worth in 1913 yeah but i digress so so we've got a real problem and the bankers know it so now how do you reset and the answer is i don't think they know this backstop that they've made with this you know the great taking that david webb really illustrates quite well hasn't in his view and in mind been thought through all the way because mm -hmm. this would this would wipe out billionaires yeah. i mean this would basically wipe out everyone except the very, very few banks. And now they have all the assets. And so what do you do with it? Now, as he points out, and I love to point out- that And, and you have to add it. there too, hold on a second. You yeah. have to add, it would wipe up everyone except those who are holding in physical in their own possession. 
Drawing parallels to the 2008 financial crisis, Morgan introduces the concept of Ice-9, a hypothetical scenario inspired by Kurt Vonnegut's Cat's Cradle. He elaborates on how a loss of trust among banks, as witnessed during the subprime mortgage crisis, can lead to a system freeze. The Federal Reserve's intervention in 2008, although successful in the short term, raises questions about the effectiveness of similar measures in the face of current challenges. Morgan suggests that the system is currently at risk, with bankers fully aware of the impending problem but unsure of a viable solution. Morgan introduces the idea of a Great Reset, a backstop mechanism that could potentially wipe out billionaires while consolidating assets in the hands of a few banks. He explores the consequences of such a reset and questions whether it has been thoroughly thought through by the authorities. The scenario presented by Morgan implies a significant upheaval, potentially impacting everyone except those holding physical assets outside the traditional financial system. Right. And the other part is the physical economy. And I was taught this very early on. And it kind of gave right. me a sense of relief. And that is, in a true all-out 100% financial collapse, what happens? Well, listen, all the schools are there. All the churches are there. All the wheat fields are there. All the oil fields are there. Mm -hmm. All the labor's ability is there. All the grocery stores are there. So basically, in a financial collapse, the physical economy basically stays in place. The problem is that there's a mitigation of who has ownership to it. Yeah. And that's what this DTCC, CD and company and great takings all about. Who gets to start the game over? Right. We the people? Well, damn well, I hope so. Yeah. Or these bastard bankers that have held us in captive, you know, since the Babylonian days, basically. You know, I won't take any credit. I mean, I might take some, but, you know, Captain Austin Fitz has got, you know, Cash Fridays, and now I think it's Cash Every Day. Yeah. Uh, Cliff High has talked about it. So the way to mitigate uh, the problem is to go to, an anonymous source, which is a bank note, and no one could trace it or track it. And also, it's uh, a tangible asset. Yeah, I'm not for fiat, but it beats the heck out of having a digital representation. Mm -hmm. So if your bank balance is 5,000 bucks and you have you know, 4,900 in physical notes and 100 in digital, you're pretty well off because you have got a physical representation of what people consider to be money. And so more and more people are actually waking up to that. Not only does it protect your privacy, but it also mitigates a bank run or a bank failure or a closure of your bank or a bail-in or any of these things. So I think it's a good feedback loop showing that more and more people are saying, you know what, this makes a lot of sense. It's like the idea of storing food. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, it's a no-lose game. The worst thing that can happen is you save money on your food bill and you have to eat it. And if yeah. you don't like what you bought, then give it away to a food bank. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing here, having cash outside of the system, out, you know, in your possession. If there is a bank closure for a couple of days, you're much better off because cash should, and most likely would work for fill in the blank. A week, two weeks, two months, two years. I doubt it'd be two years, but it would definitely be accepted for a while. Mm -hmm. And even in the unlikely event of a bank run, which is possible, even with these grid downs, I mean, we're seeing more and more problems with the cyber attacks in these grid towns. It's very underreported, just like what's really going on in the banking system. You're not seeing all of the behind the scenes problems like you were expressing on Rumble that's actually taking place. You don't get that on the mainstream news. And mm -hmm. yet, if you can't access the ATM machine, you can't access cash. Mm -hmm. Or if you can't access your card reader at the gas station, and that's all you have is digits and not physical cash, you can't buy gas. In a true financial collapse, Morgan contends that the physical economy remains intact. However, ownership becomes a critical factor as illustrated by the role of institutions like DTCCCD and the Great Taking. Morgan emphasizes the importance of physical possession, suggesting that those holding tangible assets may have an advantage in the aftermath of a financial reset. Addressing potential solutions, Morgan advocates for the use of tangible assets such as physical banknotes. He explores the advantages of having an anonymous source of wealth that cannot be easily traced or tracked, 
Morgan contends that holding physical currency not only protects privacy but also serves as a safeguard against bank runs, closures, or bail-ins. I'm not in the ad adiabatic oil debate. I think we are at peak oil, but even if we're not, we're certainly pushed in that direction. Yeah. And I am very aware of uh, the uh, the lost century by Dr. Stephen Greer about alternative energies, yeah. not even talking about free energy, just talking about the 200 mile per gallon carburetor and those kind of things that existed. Yeah. And these people get uh, snuffed out or their uh, project gets bought out or whatever. So I'm very aware that they're all alternatives. I also am very aware of energy makes the world go round and they have a grip on it <clears throat> that they're not gonna let go of. So regardless of what the truth is regarding how much oil or we have or don't have, it's very clear what direction. So having said that, if you control the oil, you basically control the world economy. Mm -hmm. And the UAE mitigating the dollar, I got one of my members who wasn't upset with me, very polite, my membership you know, was pretty, nice to me. He said, you're wrong that it isn't that the UAE is stopping the dollar. It's just they're using local currencies and the dollar. Well, I got to Greg Hunter and reviewed it. I couldn't find anywhere where it said that they're still using the dollar in the UAE, although that could be the case. I couldn't find it. Right. But it did say the Saudis are still using the US dollar and local currencies. I got something rather frightening today from an unsubstantiated source that basically indicated that um, a revaluation across the board is going to happen within the next couple of months or so, which kind of goes along with uh, the uh, data from Cliff High. Uh, again, I don't want to misrepresent or mischaracterize what Cliff is saying because I'm not absolutely sure, but I think there is something out. I don't think it's out very far. Mm -hmm. And a reset can take on a lot of things. Again, one- Are you talking see. here a reset of currencies or are you talking about resetting gold and silver here, which kind of is the same conversation? Yeah, it's the same conversation more or less. Right. I'm talking resetting currencies. Okay, okay. You know, I mean, basically, if you, could, if you could counterfeit until you get caught, which is basically what's happened with the United States dollar for decades, yeah. and all of a sudden China says enough of it, Saudi Arabia says enough of it. The United Arab Emirates says, the hell, we're not even going to mess with you guys anymore. We're done. And this starts to become the trend. A trend in motion continues till it actually stops. I mean, I'll go to a science fiction movie. It always scared the heck out of me. Get the name of the movie or I tell you, Jean-Claude. But it was a well-dressed gentleman in an airport and he's going to the currency exchange window. And the only thing he can exchange that's not accepted is US dollars. Mm. How are those apps? <laughs> I mean, this is something that the bet, the reserve currency of the world, and all of a sudden it flips, flops upside down. And it's not, now I'm not saying it's going to 